Hi, Simon. Good to see you. And you? Now, uh, Helen, you're being uh, great now to come on and talk about um, penicillin delabeling. And uh, we've got a previous video uh, that's more uh, for the general public, for patients. Um, but the conversation we're going to have today is more around what can a GP do? Now, as a GP yourself, I think it's, it's helpful to come across, you know, to uh, talk from your perspective as well. But, you know, what is it? Why is it important? Why is it something that a GP ought to consider? And what should they talk to a, a patient about when they come in and say, look, you know, I've I've got a penicillin allergy on my records. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, drug allergy is really important, and I think like many forms of allergy, something that we don't get talked about very well in in general practice. And what we've seen from a big study is that about ten percent of the population believe that they've got a penicillin allergy, whereas the reality is that it's only actually about one percent. And I think we have to recognise as GPs that perhaps part of the reason for that is that we have mislabeled them because perhaps we haven't been taught very well how to recognise if someone is truly having an allergic reaction. So we've always gone with, well, let's just be safe and just say you're allergic and not have it because there's lots of other drugs. But there was a very big audit that was done that showed that actually if you have a label of penicillin allergy, you're much more likely to have a longer hospital stay. 23% increased risk of C. difficile because you get more complicated antibiotics and actually more risks because you get antibiotics that then mean that you're more likely to acquire other infections like MRSA. So it's actually really important that we only label people with an allergy if it's accurate and not just a just as a safety thing. So what, what would a GP, what would you as a GP say to a patient who comes in and say, look, I'm going for... You know, I'm going for a procedure, I'm going for an operation. But, you know, when I was much younger, I've, uh, you know, I may have had a, a reaction to penicillin, um, but I don't know. Um, is, is it is it then that they go uh, have a referral to the allergy clinic for a test? What happens? It would be lovely if we had clinics available where they'd be able to tell somebody for certain whether or not they've got penicillin allergy. But as we all know, allergy clinics are swamped anyway. And so therefore, the only time that allergy clinics will accept a referral for that is if somebody really needed the penicillin because they've got something like cystic fibrosis where it's important that they're going to need it. I think the important thing as a GP is to try to get the diagnosis right in the very first place. So it's being aware of things like actually drug allergies, particularly to antibiotics, are very unusual in the early years. So in the first like sort of five, six in the childhood years, really unusual that it's going to happen. And the reason that children get rashes, even like rashes with hives and urticaria, are actually because of the illness itself, or we think because of the interaction of the antibiotic with the illness. So when we're looking at an adult that then comes, you know, if we've got their full medical records, really useful to see, can we track back to what happened? But actually what we know is that many um, many GPs are not brilliant at writing down, like what was the drug that we're talking about? How many, how many doses did they have before the reaction occurred? What was the reaction? Uh, we know that people, certainly in the older days, never wrote that information down. So when you're talking to a patient, I think you need to find out, OK, well, how severe was this reaction? So for starters, were they in hospital? And if they were, then we're going to definitely err on the side of caution and say, OK, just stick with the penicillin allergy label. That would need delabeling by a specialist. But if they say, well, no, I, you know, there are no symptoms suggestive of anaphylaxis um, and they were just at home, then we may be able to take a few more risks with that, particularly if somebody ever really needed penicillin. So it's, it's really interesting to know, I think, that actually of all the people who had penicillin allergy, after 15 years, that allergy does actually resolve. So only about 0.5% of people are left with an allergy. So if you're thinking about like a 90 year old where we're stuck, they've got multiple drug allergy labels and we want to give them something. If there was definitely no history of hospital admissions, severe reactions, anaphylaxis, it may be that we consider a smaller dose to begin with as a trial um, and then and then proceeding onwards if needed, because even if they did have an allergy, there's a strong chance they'll have outgrown it by then. And there's a good BMJ article about that, about when could you re-challenge somebody um, after you've done a risk stratifying. Perhaps we'll find that link then, uh, Alan, put the uh, BMJ article in the description underneath this video.
Yeah, that would be useful. I mean, for the ones who I think the ones we find harder as GPs are the ones that present with just sort of what we call macular papular rashes. So just slightly raised red bumpy rashes. And, you know, we know that lots of viruses and illnesses give those rashes, but we're left going, well, was it the penicillin or was it the rash that um, or was it the antibiotic that caused it? And actually, if you gave the antibiotic again in the future and it actually was the antibiotic, so it was a true allergy, all that's going to occur is that the rash is going to occur again at the same sort of stage. So that's usually after three days and it's not going to progress. So knowing that and knowing that the risk from um, what's called a type four reaction, so a more delayed reaction, is just going to be that they're going to have another macular papular rash. It, it, it makes us feel better that we could try it again. The history surrounding a type one reaction where you've got the risk of anaphylaxis would normally be that after the very first dose, they had hives, swelling, breathing difficulties. But the guidelines do say that it can occur within 48 hours. So if you've got someone that within 48 hours had those symptoms, you're going to be suspicious that's an IgE allergy and not retry it. But if actually the hives and swelling appeared after day five, then it's probably the, um, the bug itself or an interaction with the antibiotic that caused it. Because IgE allergies are immediate. Your immune system is primed and ready to go. So usually with the very first dose, they get straight off a significant reaction. That's very helpful the other to point, know. Uh, it, the other point I think is, is important to make is that if you have never had a drug before, so if we had like a two-year-old and as GPs, we often do have their notes and they've never been on intensive care. They've definitely never had the antibiotic in another setting. And the very first time they got it, they got hives. Well, their immune system wouldn't have recognized it. So if the first time you were given that drug, you had IgE symptoms, so hives, swelling, it is not going to be from the drug. It would be highly unlikely. And especially knowing that in a younger age group, it's more likely the bug, you could straight off go, this isn't the antibiotic. Um, the, it can occur on the first exposure to a macular papular rash, but usually at day six and not generally after the course is finished. So it's those key points that we kind of need to work out. Of, have you had this antibiotic before? If the answer is no, it's unlikely you're going to have an allergy to it. Um, and what's the timing involved with these things? Great. Thanks very much indeed. That's very helpful to know.